everybody. How you doing tonight, Scott? I am doing just fine. How are you? Good. Doing real good. Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome. JD here's episode two, 701 Nation. Got my guest tonight, Scott Bachmeyer from Dakota Prairie Outdoors. And tonight, Scott, we're going to be talking about uh, my favorite cartridge, buddy. The 223 Is It America's Cartridge. And we've had people debate me on the phone all day after seeing some stuff we put up. But uh, we're going to we're going to hit on that a little bit. Uh, Scott said he's a little wore out tonight, so we're waiting for that for that energy to pump up on him. I went and got myself an energy drink. <laughs> so, <laughs> Love it. It's well, it's better that. than Monster, I guess. So, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, it's more, way more healthy for you. I mean, I'm not even kidding around saying, you know, I got the, the Coors Light, so that's from the Rockies, the Rocky Mountains. But yeah. And uh, first of all, I'd like to say we got, a, we got us a new sponsor, along with our sponsor, Lauer Auto Repair. We got Double H Guns now got on board with us. Talked to Daryl down there. So, um, you know, we're going to have some commercials here. Uh, Mike Deacons put it together for us. And it's a good commercial. We're getting, he actually remastered the Lauer Auto Repair one as well. So when it comes to commercial time, we're going to hit that. Again, appreciate Double H Guns and, and especially Lauer Auto has been with us since the beginning of this sucker. And he ain't going anywhere. So. All right, Scott. So let's, let's do a little. I'll just do. I'm not going to get too geeked out on the history of the 223 because we got plenty of other stuff we can talk about, and we will get to talking about. Um, so you know, there's no denying uh, military cartridge kind of has the influence on civilian rifles and ammunition, right? Which is a big part always, of it. But big always part has of been. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. look back at the 30 odd six. Right? Yep. 30 odd six, 45 70. Um, 762 by 51, otherwise known as the legendary 308, you know, <laughs> legendary, legendary 308. <laughs> and, uh, which actually Scott, before I get a little farther in this, they actually, part of the, once this was in the military trials, they were doing this, they tested the 223 and they were doing accuracy. I can't remember how many rounds they shot, but between, um, I think at the, at the time it was the M855 ball against the T-44, I think the 308 was called in the, in the full metal jacket. And the guy shooting the 223, no surprise, right? Smaller caliber, less recoil. They outshot, big time outshot the guys at the 30 cal. And that was one of the things that they uh, that they used to, you know, to make it officially in 1963, the the official Army cartridge there. But it was actually, and Gene, Gene our buddy Gene, uh, Mayor of Mayor Moverage, um, it was a 222, which that was invented in 1950, right? And but they had two things that that couldn't do that they made them alter this cartridge because the 222 was the parent to the 223. Um, it had to be supersonic at 500 yards, which the old triple deuce was not. And it had this is kind of weird, but it had to pierce one side of a U.S. Army soldier helmet at 500 yards. Okay. Which, Kind of surprises me that a 222 wouldn't do that. I have a 222 right over there in my closet, the first rifle I ever killed a deer with. But um, yeah, that wouldn't do it. So they t- they took that cartridge um, and changed the neck angle on it, and they shortened they shortened the case neck or the shoulder. They they changed the shoulder angle, shortened the case neck, put more powder in. Voila, we got the we got the 223 right. And a lot of people, Scott. Yeah, they still go back to like Vietnam, right? It jammed up. I mean, more more and less with the AR, right? Right. And it wasn't that accurate, which they had like a one in fourteen twist in these rifles when they adopted officially adopted the two twenty three in in nineteen sixty three for the military, and that was like I said, um, the M eight fifty five or M one ninety three, I think. No, that was one ninety three is a sixty two grain M one fifty five, I think. Um, if let me get the chat so but anyway. That sucker wouldn't stabilize very good, and you know, so they had to change the twist on that, and, and, and but then it zipped through people, right? And then eventually they had to go with the heavier grain bullet with that. But but uh, yeah, sixty three was pretty much adopted by both of them. Civilian market two twenty three Remington, and it, it's been going skyrocketing since then. Still, Scott, the number one selling center fire rifle cartridge in America is the two twenty three, right? Well, it's just a all around great one, whether you're getting somebody into shooting or if you're still like me. I mean, I carry one with me. I have one in my Ranger all yep. the time, all summer long. Yep. And I mean, it's just a good, quick, some people call it a jack handle. I've had people tell me that. Yeah. 
but my jack handle's taken a lot of animals, whether it's prairie dogs, coyotes, and I've even shot in a deer with a 223. So, I mean, yeah, I, I have nothing against it. I mean, I, some of these people are really, they're like, well, you might as well buy a 308 so you can do something with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can do and, something you know, with 223. And I don't have any, obviously, you know, I don't have anything against a 308, but as I just even said previously, um, the guys with the 223 and the AR were out shooting the hell out of the guys with the M14s and, and, and the, and the 308 or 762 by 51, you know, it's a 308. You know, let's yeah. just let's get that out of the way real quick. The difference, because some, maybe some people don't know, 223. The military calls it 556 five, NATO, 762 yeah. by five. Um, it's the throat length, right? The throat length. It, it can take the military round can take more pressure. They 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 did that, because you know, so you get a little more pressure there to get that bullet going at. Because I think the 55 grainer they wanted ended up it had to go. 3,250 feet per second out of a 20 inch barrel and the Remington 223, I guess didn't cut it. So they made it a little more for the military. Some people say, <laughs> there you go. Danelle 223 God's cartridge. It is. It's God's cartridge and America's cartridge. I'm, we're going to, we're going we're gonna to hit that. But uh, yeah, the difference is they to cut through all of this other mumble jumble. They say you can shoot, you know, the 223 in the 556, five, but don't yeah. shoot 55s. Five, and I know guys who build guns, Scott, that say that's complete bullshit. Really? Yeah. Okay. They're like, that's old rifles. And old rifles, they'll tell you, like, if this thing was built in like 1970 or something, yeah, but like, like a modern AR or whatever, your, your Tika or Remington that you go buy now or your Ruger, that's a 223. Just they're just built better now. I mean, back then they probably didn't have the technology like they do now. Yep. And, I'm telling you, the twist in the barrel makes a big difference, uh, even down to the smallest of calibers. But the 223, that's one thing you got to get the right twist depending on which uh, grain you're going to be shooting out of this. Yep, yep, you're right. And, and like I said, the military started out with the whole wrong one, which is actually big know, time. Yeah, and the bullet would tumble. It actually did more damage, right? Like I said, and then when they changed it, and it um <laughs> it was just poking little holes through people because then the thing was to stabilize the bullet and it was going nice and straight but but at long range accuracy the tumbly the the head the guys up in the military didn't want that you know I, you know plenty of guys who are in combat scott and and you know i have friends and relatives as well who were and honestly i they don't really bitch about the 223 when they were in iraq not at all i have a good friend of mine is a mechanic and I mean, he's got a purple heart. He's seen some pretty hard time and everything. And he said the same thing. He's like, give me a 223. He says, I know where to go. I can shoot that. He says, I'll drop any deer or anywhere. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's what he uses. He's comfortable with it. And he uses the AR platform for hunting. And why wouldn't you? I mean, yeah, I mean, I he spent Great. four or five years, like, trying to save his life and his platoon's life. Um, you probably know that rifle pretty well by now. I would yeah, say. I so, mean, if it's, yeah. if it's good enough to save your own ass in combat, it sure is hell good enough. And it, it has limitations, which we're going to get into shortly. I'm just kind of we're just kind of giving a little history here, Scott, and then we'll get into the to the meats, to the, to the what do you want to call it the the meat of the art of what I'm saying here is why I, I think it's America's cartridge or, or or you know I've said it before God's cartridge, and I think the one and eight's God's twist actually too, but. <laughs> one and eight. Yeah, yeah. At, at what grain? At any grain. That's what I like about the one and eight, man. It, it's really? it'll stabilize yeah. about anything, you know. I mean, there's probably some long range guys who shoot like these ninety grain Sierras. They're like, no, nah, I won't stabilize that. Well, okay, I you, you might have me there, but that's right. at the far end of this. And but uh, all right, let's get into a few comments here, Scott, and see what. Uh, well, there's plenty of them coming up here. Yeah, we're getting them going. Appreciate everybody. This is awesome, man. I love it, Josh. Hey, what's up, Josh? Josh, always listening. Hey, what's up, JD and Scott? He's uh, met Josh down there, Scott. In case you didn't know, I met him down. We were in the Selfridge Prairie Dog Tournament there. Trampas, evening, Trampas. Whalen Turnus, good evening, guys. Evening, Whalen. One shot cap. Evening, seven hundred one nation. Yeah, evening to you. Brian Warner, good evening, fellow MBEs. As a matter of fact, Scott, real quick, two weeks from tomorrow night, I'm having Brian and his dad on. He owns the worst shop in Dickinson. We're going to be talking yes. some sausage making. Love the worst <laughs> shop, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I love it. I love awesome. the worst shop. Yeah. I, I sneak in there probably once every month when I, I go to Dickinson for some board meetings, and I sneak in there. Absolutely. So yeah, two weeks from tomorrow. It's it's going to be a Friday. I, I've never, you know, I don't know. 
Um, we do have a younger demographic as well, but I'm, you know, hey, I'm, I'm good with Friday and Friday in February. Let's talk some uh, sausage making on, on 701 Nation, right? Brandon George, hey, good. what's what's good tonight, y'all? Hey, Brandon. Brandon's got uh, Bad Boys Custom Lures. Appreciate you, Brandon, tuning in. Um, Tramp, from the land of sky blue waters where Trampus is at. No, 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 no. Oh, you don't, you're drinking, baby. It's Ham. the land of the sky blue water. <laughs> now, that's, now that's a boy that knows his beers right there. That's good yeah. job. All right. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, we got the big bear on there. <laughs> it really sounds like cartoons advertising beer, right? You probably can't even do that anymore, right, Scott? Well, they went back to the retro cans, man. Okay. What? Not, yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, they went back retro. You know, the first beer I got a minor in possession on was Ham's. Get a boy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it is about Slope County, but if you come out here and you have a hams, you're you're probably gonna get access to hunt. Pretty good well, chance. All right. Well yeah. I'll tell you what, next time I come out, I'm leaving my cores light at home. I'm rolling in with hams pounders, man. Let's do it. Because hams don't even make a light, do they? They do. Really? Okay. They do. Yeah. Well, maybe I might turn into a hams drinker. I'll have to give it a go. Stick with it. Stick with the original. The, yeah, the, the light's too light. Dan Brown. Good evening, JD and Scott. You know Dan Scott. Absolutely. Eric, Eric Newman. Good evening. Evening, Danelle. There's your fellow MVE stopping in. <laughs> See, oh Clay Peterson there too. All right, and Danelle. Is Clay sniping in on on Danelle's account here? Or is, we got them both. I hope we got both Petersons tuning in. All right, here we go, Eric. Uh, my 223 is like an extra limb to me. It goes where I go. And that's pretty much what you were saying about yep. yours, Scott. And yep. what's that one you got? A Savage, right? It's just a Savage. It's just the base model. You know, the only thing I did different on that is I took the spring out and I cut a couple coils off the spring on the trigger. Filed it down a little bit. Just yeah. made it a little bit more usable. Good triggers, man. That's one of your, in my opinion, one of the best things you can do for accuracy, right there. Yeah. Oh yeah. And um, so, what do you? I, mean, you, I know you're not a big group shooter like geek like I am, but what what do you do when you like you zero then just hit a hundred then and you shot like an inch and you're like, yeah, yeah, this is good go. <clears throat> With my two twenty three, what I usually do is go one inch at a hundred yards, one inch above, and then I'm good out to about two two and a quarter roughly on a coyote. Mm -hmm. And guys, gotta remember, coyote. If you take the fur off of a coyote, it's like shooting a Tiny. loaf of bread. Tiny, yeah, yeah. exactly. They yeah, look so, big, yeah, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so I, so I use that for like my, I call it get out of the pickup really fast rifle. Yep. Perfect. Porcupines, coons, skunks, everything, and then uh, if I get serious and I go on in like a coyote tournament, then I use a different caliber. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, I mean, I'll, well, I'm not gonna argue. I shot your other gun, so I can't. Yeah, that thing's money. So, but uh, all right, I got my mom in here, Paul Odegaard. I liked the 223 Go Nation. Yeah, and actually, my mom, we went out to center shooting, and my mom was shooting a DPMS 20 inch that um, they got at the NRA banquet years ago, and yeah, my mom was sniping shit with that. It was it was great. We need to do my new one. Okay, it's not new. I. Got a DPMS Panther way back in the day, NRA, from Mr. Gene Cox, who was doing the paperwork back then. Yep. I had Keith Warren out here, and Timber Creek Outdoors CEO was out here shooting prairie dogs. And he looked at that, and he says, do you have an AR? I said, yeah, I have one. And he grabs it, and he's like, I'm taking this back with me. And he sent it back to me, completely tricked out. The only thing that I think that's original is, like, the serial number. Mm -hmm. because he tricked this thing completely out and i've yet to shoot it it is so light it's awesome man i mean it looks great i'm just not an ar guy because i don't like cleaning rifles as much as probably some people do <laughs> yeah and i love and i love shooting suppressed man i really do and that really makes it dirty on ar yeah. styles yeah a lot of people think cleaning guns is therapeutic for them not for me i it stresses me out because i hate doing it no i agree with you i, I just think my you. tolerance is very consistent when it's not cleaned <laughs> very very tight yeah well if i don't get down there and we do that you you get up this way bring it with and and we'll set something up at dougie's and then man he can shoot out as far as you want down there well, i mean i'm stretching out a little bit but i mean 220 would easily within the within the realm of the 223 so yeah yeah, and and I and I love doing that, shooting those, and uh, yeah, I'd like to see what the guy did to that. It'd be awesome. Didn't you say they were like uh, the guy was a? Uh, you wanted to bring in like the Blackhawks or something? Yeah, yeah, he was a. Uh, 
So he was in the military. He was a sniper in the military. And him and Chris Kyle were, they should make a movie about this guy too. This guy has probably more awesome. confirmed kills that he doesn't want, even want to talk about. He's, I tell you what, you and I haven't experienced it, but these guys have been in the military. I got a good buddy that I was talking about, that mechanic. You should have him on your program and just do a vet, do a veterans one and talk to him about it because he loves sharing that story because, you know, Vietnam vets, they kind of held yep. it all in. Yeah. And it's important for these guys to be able to talk about it. Yeah. Oh, I'd love yeah. to do it. Yeah, we'll have yeah. to talk about that. I'd be more than happy to do that. I know Clay and I have my Uncle Dean on one time, and, yeah, he had, man, he's had he got a lot of stuff that, uh, hell, I didn't even know about. So, yeah. you know, it, it's good to hear that. I mean, people need to hear those kind of things. But, all right, let's go. We got uh, Brown and George, uh, just a reliable round overall, accurate, fast, and deadly. Josh Patterson loves the 223 bolt tack driver. Eric Newman piled up five deer in the last two years with their 223 55 grain bullets, which by said that 55 grain bullet, by far the most popular bullet yep. weight for 223. Yep. Doug Thompson, evening guys, evening Doug. Uh, one shot cap. This live is a rerun. <laughs> nope, it's live. Uh, Brad and George replying to Doug Thompson, how is it tonight? I, uh, Brian Warner used to own the worst shop. He's retired. Okay, used to own it. His dad, his dad used oh, to. Oh, okay. So we're okay. still talking. We're still going to talk sausage making with uh, Brian and his dad. So, hey, there you go. Br Br Hams was Brandon's beer choice. <laughs> oh, Lynette Schlitz malt. Gene Cox made good. Gene, I'm glad you made whoa, it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Got to yep. back up now. She's a Schlitz. Uh, who is doing the Schlitz? Lynette K. That's okay. uh, Dougie's wife. You got to go down to Deadwood, South Dakota, Main Street. There's this place. It's uh, uh, something Peacock or whatever. I don't remember what the heck it is, but it's on the uh, right-hand side if you're going into Deadwood. And it's a woman's clothing store. And in the center of it is a Schlitz bar. <laughs> the owner's husband sits back there. One dollar Schlitz beers. Well, if you're if as long as you're straight Schlitz or the malt liquor, Schlitz, Ooh. Schlitz beer. As long as your spouse is shopping, it's a one dollar. If you just come in without a spouse, it's probably two bucks. Still a good but, deal. But I mean, what a great thing. That's you in Deadwood. That? In Deadwood, yeah, <laughs> I can't remember something like that. But anyway, yeah, my wife needed something for the Stockman's Foundation ball, and she's like, "I want to go in here." I'm like, "All right." I'll follow you in here, right? Yep. And uh, she's like, well, just go up there. There's a bar. And I'm like, say what now? Somebody is smart mm -hmm. enough to put a bar in a women's clothing store? That's awesome. Really? And, uh, and let me tell you, it was a lot of fun. The guy is great. But all they serve is Schlitz. That's well, you it. Know what, you know what he can even do to improve more attendance? Start selling 223 ammunition there. I bet if you would ask, he'd probably have some of that too. <laughs> all right. Trappa said they quit making hams light. Oh, maybe they did. I think I, I, I don't know. Clay's, uh, Clay's ghosting. He's using Danell's, uh, Danell's YouTube account. Doug Thompson getting ready to throw some lead, shooting air rifle in my garage attempt. Perfect. I love it. air rifles. Fun man. A lot of people don't do that. They're awesome. Very, Josh, Josh Bash, exactly right. M car, M carbo trigger spring kit does wonders for Savage. Yeah, and I've actually used the M carbo uh, trigger springs in the Ruger American. Work great. James Borman, my cousin. What's up, Jimmy? What's up, James? He's down in Iowa, man. Thanks for tuning in, brother. Appreciate that. Appreciate it. All right, Corey Merriman, he's got a Diamondback AR-223. He's good to go out to 500 yards. Down Diamondback. Right. Yeah, Diamondbacks are really nice. Yeah, yeah, man, we used to have them at NRA banquets. Remember yeah. that, Scott? Yeah, I think, Jesse, I think Jesse Flaster has a couple of them. Yeah, my buddy yeah. actually, uh, Big R, got a, one of 308 Diamondback as well. Hey, we're going all military cartridges here. One shot cap. God bless our veterans. God Absolutely. bless them. Absolutely. One shot cap. Yeah, oh, there you go. Clay's going. He's coming in on the guns in the 701. Your G Cox next door to Mustang Sally's is where you're talking, I think. Scott, see, right? He know. See, he knows. So also, Mr. Mayor said, Scott, uh, what? Some whiskey, uh, West River whiskey is another. You can go in and do tastings and samples. Yep. And the lady that helps out do that, she's originally from the Bowman Noor for a long, many, many years. And he uh, claims that he went in and bought me a bottle of whiskey that I get to get mobraged in order to pick up. 
So uh, you know they make UPS deliveries to my ranch. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. yeah. All right, Scott. So we're gonna do our first break here, and I tell you, when, we're, when we come back, we're gonna get into a little more why I'm gonna say the 223 is America's cartridge. All right. So we got two ads here, a couple minutes. <laughs> so here we go with the first one. Auto Repair, located at 309 South Washington Street in Bismarck, North Dakota. Give them a call at 701-258-6308. The team of mechanics at Lauer Auto can take care of any problem your vehicle is having. And when you do business with Lauer, you can be assured you're doing business with a pro Second Amendment America First Repair Shop. There are plenty of other auto repair shops in the Bismarck Mandan area. But why take a chance at patronizing a shop that might not have your beliefs at heart? Make no mistake make no mistake lower auto is your pro second amendment repair shop when you talk to the guys at lower auto don't forget to tell them that you heard they are sponsor of guns and the 701 and that you appreciate their support of our pro second amendment pro north dakota live stream and podcast that's lower auto repair 701-258-6308 701-258-6308 located at 309 south washington street in bismarck north dakota Discover the world of firearms at Bismarck's Double H Gun Shop. With a wide range of products from handguns to rifles, we cater to all your shooting needs. We are your local gun experts. Not only do we sell firearms, reloading supplies, targets, and whatever your heart desires, but we also have a ton of knowledge and answers. We shoot, we hunt, we compete, we reload. It's been the Howard's way since 1976, and we ain't fixing to change anything. Visit our website at hhgunshop.com to browse our inventory. Double H Gun Shop, Bismarck's best new and used fire arm reloading supply gunsmithing and sporting goods store double h guns double h guns 1021 south washington street bismarck north dakota call 701-223-4888 right you know, on you know what h and h stands for don't you jamie howard and howard hornaday and hams <laughs> works for me buddy <laughs> works for me <laughs> oh yeah hey man and you guys get in there when you if you support our sponsors make sure you tell me you heard it on guns in the 701 and 701 nation you i'm serious tell me you appreciate them uh sponsoring yeah. live streams like this because uh i well, know scott can attest to this more than anybody he's been doing it for 20 years on, on on real radio scott um without sponsors man it's pretty i mean you can do it but you, you can do it, it absolutely it. but i'll tell you this right now the sponsor is what makes it go on and and yeah, stop in. Whether you have something good to, that we said tonight or even something that you didn't agree with. Yeah, right. Let right. them know that you're listening. Let them know. Yeah. Or yeah. watching, I guess. You can say watching. I got to say listening. <laughs> As you can see, the face there for radio, buddy. Oh, not podcast. Hey, man, that's the prettiest man I ever saw. <laughs> I did a little welding without my welding hood on today, and I got a little flash burn going on. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, it looks good. You're looking at least you can see in the background now. When I was on with you a few weeks ago, there you're all for was it 20? Was it 30 below or 30? Man, oh, you were oh man, it you're froze up. I don't all, right. all I have is a sweatshirt on, I don't <laughs> yeah. have a parka. Perfect, yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah, I, I like this January thaw we got coming. So, uh, all so, right, Scott, let's get it. So, let's get into why, why is the 223 America's cartridge, in my opinion, in my opinion. Um, and I had some buddies of mine text me today. Oh man, you can't kill this with that, and it's it's you know it won't penetrate this and that. The, um, it's American what are they, cartridge. What are they shooting here? Let Let's go through the animals in yeah. North America and see what they can shoot and what they can't shoot with it. Right, because I'm going to argue this. Okay, yeah, and and I tell you what, I'm not I'm not going on America's. I'm not saying it's America's hunting cartridge. I'm saying all around. And when I get into all around, I'm talking. Ammo abundance, ammo selection, recoil, rifle selection, and yet it does have killing power. Right. Um, you, and you can get rifles with, with, with the magazines and the recoil, and you can kill everything, in my opinion, from a squirrel to a deer and beyond. It depends on how you're, what you're hunting it for, right? And I don't know if the squirrel would have anything left that you'd want to yeah. eat, but you can kill Perfect. a squirrel, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I'm not. I'm not from um, the south. I don't eat. That's squirrel. what I'm saying. Down in, <laughs> those southern boys that love to go squirrel yeah, hunting. Love you, southern guys, but I'm not yeah. eating squirrel until I have to, man. <laughs> and and of course, you know, Scott, if the shit hits a fan, guess what? There's plenty of. 
because the U.S. military has it, and as I said, it's the most popular sold center fire rifle cartridge in America. Yeah. And, and and matter of fact, NATO love them or hate them. I'm not a fan, but guess what they use? Five five six. So there's plenty of that shit all over the world. You know, I think the only thing in America that outsells it in a rifle is is, is just a straight up old twenty two. So I don't know if you got anything to add to that, Scott. But, I mean, we can talk. Let's talk about, uh, like you were saying, killing stuff. Like st- I mean, yeah. most people will tell you, well, shit, you can't kill nothing with that thing. Well, that's false. 100%. Let's go, let's go through animals. Yeah, All right. Absolutely. Prairie yeah. dogs. Shot a prairie dog with one. Yep. Coyotes. Porcupine. Skunks. Okay. Which is understandable, right? Those are pretty easy animals. Yeah. I've taken a white-tailed deer with one. I've taken a mule deer with one. And these are one shots, by the way. Right. I've had to, I had a cow break a leg. Took care of the cow with one shot. I had bulls break legs and I had to do that for butchering. And I used my 223 for that. And I had a guy that could not get his elk taken care of. And all I had was my 223. <laughs> and with the right shot placement, you can kill an elk with one shot with a 223. Right. And that's the big thing is shot placement. I think that's where a lot of people, they need to worry about where they're actually using the right caliber for what you want to do. Yeah. And Corey, and Corey Merriman said that in the comments. It's all about shot placement. Actually, Scott, the deer that I've actually, that I've seen um, and killed with the 223, I'm not going to lie to you. It was, it was one shot. Yeah. It was one shot. And then, so, and, and as far as ammo goes, they make deer specific ammo now. And Axe and I even actually did a test not on I mean, two deer loads, the 64 grain uh, Nostler and a 62 grain um, B- Sierra Boattail Soft Point. I mean, opened up perfect, great wound shit. Went through at 250 yards. I shot the sucker, opened up, and blew right through the ballistics gelatin. So, you know, well, it probably didn't open up enough, J.D. It, yeah, it's not going to massively pedal out. it, And I would say... There's restrict. I would not actually shoot at a deer past 200 with it. I mean, I maybe would, but not much farther than that. But at 200, I have no doubt that that's a deer killer. 200 yards. It probably won't go drop right in its tracks, but it will in the next yeah. 20, 30 yards. But how many deer have you seen not dropping his tracks with, with with way higher calibers? I've I've seen you know 300 wind mags, seven mm ultra mags, not drop them right in their tracks, and they and they keep going so. It's yeah. You, know, you can gut shoot them. You shoot them in the ass. I don't care how big the caliber is. It's not you know. I mean, if you got them in the rear end or something with in the hip bones with a, all copper and it blew through and probably would shatter it, it'd drop yeah. them, but it wouldn't kill them. But in the same breath, you could probably within that range of two twenty three with an all copper would would probably bury it. You know. Yeah. But that's not the point. Is you can you can kill and it, well some okay so now somebody's like well I got a two forty three it'll do the same thing. Right, but factor in what else I said. Recoil. I mean, you get a you get a woman or a young kid to shoot a two twenty three. I mean, that thing's like, especially with a suppressor on. I mean, that thing's like a freaking kitten, and and they're gonna put that thing where they or if they're shooting a two forty three and they're oh, man, this thing's gonna jump and kick. And I mean, it's an overall. It's not the best. It's like it's like the, it's like the jack of all trades to me. It's not the master. What right? the old saying, not the master of one, but it's a jack of all trades, and the availability the rifles available. I mean, AR fifteen. Whether it, whether you like ARs or not, or you don't care about them, guess what? That sucker's been the top selling rifle since probably Obama got elected in two thousand eight. Every year, yeah, you know, that, he did, I mean, he was a great gun salesman. <laughs> <laughs> and then Joe topped him, and then yeah. Joe topped him. You know, yeah. it was kind of the Trump slump, um, slump but uh, when he was in, which I was fine with, man, I. I enjoy it when my rights aren't threatened, my gun rights especially. <laughs> but yeah, and you yeah. can find ammunition. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's uh, all right. Let's go through a few of these comments here, Scott. Unless you got yeah. something you want to. No, go ahead. Add. There's plenty of comments. Let's catch yeah. up on some of these. Okay, Gene says, "JD, did you get your your finger?" I'm not. I'm not sure what that means, Gene. Unless you texted me something, and it didn't come through. <laughs> Uh, uh, Darren Mund, you guys should make a calendar. Me and Scott, okay, we can do that, right, Scott? 
JD Scott and beer and guns. We can do. I, that. I don't know if I have the beach body ready to go here just yet. Dad body kind of thing, yeah. man. Dad bod calendar. There we'll you go. Some bales and I, I don't even have kids though. That's the problem. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> Uh, Gene Cox, nine out of ten animals killed have no opinion on what you kill. <laughs> exactly, Gene. <laughs> if you shoot a deer in the heart, and he, and he, because right, Scott, you can attest. You can shoot a deer in the heart with a with a three hundred wind mag, and that sucker will still run a hundred yards just on. Yeah, ground. absolutely. So he doesn't know. All he knows is something hurt and scared him, and he's running. And the next thing you know, he, he tips over. He shoots fight or over. flight. Right. Yeah. So that that's a hundred percent true statement right there and boiler room is the key right boiler room i'm actually getting to be a, a neck shooting guy scott yep and a high shoulder i mean there was there's a couple neck shots this year my dad got one and absolutely just crumpled that big big mule deer up with that was a that was a six five creed but uh, my uncle dean says he read an article in an outdoors magazine about eskimos using 22 short to kill bears that they caught in their traps you see yeah. <laughs> i get yeah he's 100 percent right shoot right a- in the head the first 22 short, I was probably eight, nine years old, and we were working cattle, and one of the cows came through and broke a leg. And our neighbor went to his pickup, pulled out a 22 short, went right up to the skull, and it dropped that cow instantly. Those 22 shorts, they got some killing power. Absolutely. I have yeah. no problem with that one bit. Yeah. Uh, so real quick off topic, just but you know how people always want to shoot let's go shoot the pig and we're going to butcher him or, or the cow we're going to shoot with the 22. Yeah. Is it, this is my opinion. You tell me if you think I'm right. I think that's from like the thirties when, when there was nothing around and you couldn't afford anything. So you're like just one round, just take that 22 and shoot it. Yeah. Cause I would, if I was going to do it, I'd just say, give me the two twenty three or whatever, the 30, 30 and I'd shoot it in the head instead of the 20. It doesn't kill him all the time. You shoot him in the head, but. I mean, I've seen I a few of them running around going nuts, but... I'm telling you, those old-timers had it figured out, man. Yeah. They were think, very efficient. I think that's what the whole thing is. At least use a 22 Magnum, in my opinion, but whatever. <laughs> like my uncle said, the 22 shorts killing, killing big old yeah. Rick and polar bears, so yeah. whatever, right? Gene Cox, military-wise, the 223 caused the Soviets to develop the AK-74 in five four five by three nine yeah that's exactly that's wow. exactly right you know and, and it did i mean the, i've read much many stories about it and the russians even said that was far more accurate than the 762 by three nine and even past 200 to 223 or the seven six or the five four five by three nine the, the energy outperforms the 30 cal and the 762 by three nine yeah. he said the finger at h and h for liberals <laughs> yeah Perfect. Gene, Gene was, he went in there. He was our first guy to go in there and then support H and H. So I appreciate Good. that. Um, oh, so what he's saying is he'll drive to Bismarck, but he won't come over to Rame. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I see. You got a gun shop there? My house. <laughs> gotcha. Everything's for sale for the right price, buddy. <laughs> oh, Clay says he uses a 30 30 at her butcher beef. Never fails. Yeah. Hey, speaking of 30, 30 is a great round. I mean, that's a, and Scott, you know, 30, 30, I'll tell you past 200 yards. What do you think has more energy? The two twenty three or the 30, 30 Uh, past what? Past 200, two twenty three. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, Gene box in a kill box in a butcher shop, 22 long rifle works best at two feet. Gene, do you guys use, just curious, like a hollow point or do you use a full metal jacket or what do you use when you shoot them in the butcher shop? I think whatever, it, whatever 22 is available. Soft <laughs> I know I've had people like try and finish deer off with a 22, the lead heads, and they said it just splatters and the, and the, the hair goes flying off their head. The guy worker said that's happened to him a few times. That was a handgun. It wasn't a rifle. So, so we, you know. So I was told when I was eight years old, I'm like, how did you get this cow to drop so quick? So what they, this is what this old timer told me. He says, you take a straight line be, from eye to eye mm-hmm. and you aim one inch above the center on really? any, on any animal. He says, any animal you want to kill cross the eyes one point. And that, that's what he told me. Okay. And I've used that theory and it sure seems to work. Well, you know what I've learned uh, when the old guys tell you something that's been passed down from generations. It's probably the truth. They've they've experienced it, yeah. Right, and they I, and they did that before there was anti hunting and anti agricultural people around. So 
They yeah. may have had some mishaps by trying to do something different. They figured out what worked. Yeah. 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 What Gene says right here, solid point right between the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. And Gene's a meat inspector and works in butcher shops. So, I mean, if, if he'd know. Yeah. He knows what's going to drop them. So you don't want to, you don't want to mess up any head cheese on the, on the pigs when you shoot them in the head either. Right. Those hogs are tough. <laughs> in front of a guns, man. That's what I'm saying. I've seen a few pigs run around, but that's, I think it was like hollow points or just the yeah. lead stop. So, so when I was shooting, when I, I took my 20, 223 with down to Texas hog hunting, and I was trying to get one with my archery, but I, he says, take your rifle with just in case sometimes they don't get close enough. Yeah. I says, where do you aim? He says, they're broadside, shoot them right in the ear. And I did, and it just levels them. Like, they don't even move. So I'm told the pigs are tough, and you got to have the yeah. right bullet, actually, for not just 223s, but other other higher calibers if you want to shoot them. Because they said that I'm told the shoulders, it's like a like a damn armor yeah. plate there. From shoot them right in the ear. Perfect. Don't even worry about the shoulder. If they're broadside to see the shoulder, center punch them right in the ear. What if you want to mount it? Center punch them in the ear. <laughs> Go to a good tax. Go to a good taxidermist. They'll figure it out. Yeah, right. it's not. It's not like it's going to blow the skull apart. I mean, these things are tough, but a two twenty three ain't going to blow. I mean, it went right in. It didn't come out, and it dropped right there. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's what I'm saying too. Like I've been seeing the, the neck shots have been working freaking great, and uh, you know, my kid, uh, my my youngest wants to deer hunt, and one of my buddy's youngest boys want to. So it's going to be a two twenty three if they get it. Depends on how many deer, white tail we got because you can only draw white tail for the youth tag in our unit. Yeah. But anyways, if they do, yeah, it's going to be two twenty three, and I mean, pen, you know, I think we're going to go with the uh, sixty two grainer, but we'll get it. Gene says oh, meat oh. inspector school drawn X between ear and eye. Sounds good to me. And that works. <laughs> All right, yeah. Scott. We're here's what we're going to do. We got commercial break number two here. We got okay. that coming up, and then we come back. I I know you're not a big reloader, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll make it quick. We're gonna go we're gonna go with what I like to use for reloading powders, and then after that, we're gonna go our favorite bullets for varmints, two twenty three bullets, varmints, predators, deer, antelope, home defense, and all purpose. So we're gonna hit it. Two more commercials again. I'm going to. You know, we got H and H, so they're getting uh, they're getting a special treatment here, just like Lauer is. So Lauer's always going to go first. <laughs> <laughs> Auto Repair, located at 309 South Washington Street in Bismarck, North Dakota. Give them a call at 701-258-6308. The team of mechanics at Lauer Auto can take care of any problem your vehicle is having. And when you do business with Lauer, you can be assured you're doing business with a pro Second Amendment America First Repair Shop. There are plenty of other auto repair shops in the Bismarck Mandan area. But why take a chance at patronizing a shop that might not have your beliefs at heart? Make no mistake make no mistake lower auto is your pro second amendment repair shop when you talk to the guys at lower auto don't forget to tell them that you heard they are sponsor of guns and the 701 and that you appreciate their support of our pro second amendment pro north dakota live stream and podcast that's lower auto repair 701-258-6308 701-258-6308 located 309 south washington street in bismarck north dakota Discover the world of firearms at Bismarck's Double H Gun Shop. With a wide range of products from handguns to rifles, we cater to all your shooting needs. We are your local gun experts. Not only do we sell firearms, reloading supplies, targets, and whatever your heart desires, but we also have a ton of knowledge and answers. We shoot, we hunt, we compete, we reload. It's been the Howard's way since 1976, and we ain't fixing to change anything. Visit our website at hhgunshop.com to browse our inventory. Double H Gun Shop, Bismarck's best new and used firearms. Firearm reloading supply, gunsmithing, and sporting goods store. Double H Guns. Double H Guns. 1021 South Washington Street, Bismarck, North Dakota. Call 701 223 4888. All right. Thanks again to our sponsors. And again, make sure if you go in and, and buy something from or do business with them that you mentioned you heard them at Guns in the 701. Scott, real quick, we're talking about shooting uh, you know, pigs to butcher or cattle. Right here from uh, Double H. I went in there. Can I see if I can focus? Get focused, buddy. There, there it is. is. 
Federal personal defense. I talked about these on a show a long time ago. Twenty nine grain, and Daryl donated a box. Of these we're gonna do a we're gonna do a ballistics gel test out at axles of these. I watched a couple of them, and um, man, these things look like they work pretty awesome. If you want some penetration on on game or, or personal defense, you know what kind of game that is. Hoodlums who are, are trying to do you some harm. We'll run it through, and we're, I think we're going to try and get some bones and actually go through that first and then into the gel. But uh, we're going to be doing a lot of ammo tests. Kind of talked it over with Daryl. Daryl's all on board with that. So it sounds awesome. Uh, Daryl, Double H, thanks, Daryl. We're going to get that not this weekend but next weekend because this weekend they come and actually do some night coyote hunting. Scott, I've never done it before. And I'm going to get a hold of my cousin. He said he's got a prairie dog town he's going to kill off around Dodge. Man, I'm, I'm about shooting prairie dogs. Out to 223. I'm about doing that all the time. So, and real quick, what was the farthest you ever killed a coyote with your 223? You think that it was the picture I sent you? Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it, I think when I stepped it off, it was probably 220, 225, somewhere it, there. Yeah, he dumped them easy, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, easily. Yeah, yeah. But I, I don't try to reach out too far with my 223. Because I don't practice enough with it in those longer ranges. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I kind of step up my guns in this, in my cartridges in a certain way. If I know I'm going to be going and, you know, like if I'm heading to my winter pasture where everything's long range out there because nothing's going to go through those canyons to come in. Yeah. You're going to be using long range. If I'm going to uh, get early coyotes and the, and the pups, they come in really close, then I'll be using something. Like a two oh, twenty three. Yeah. <laughs> yep, I sure do. Because <laughs> guess Absolutely. what they do when they grow up, Scott? What do yeah. they? Eat? they the same thing. They're, they're calf killers <laughs> like everything else. They're cute. Yeah. They're cute yeah. when they're puppies. They're like not else. cute. But, Good aren't... grief! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you sorry. want you want a ratty old dog with lice that smells bad, <laughs> and you think that's cute? Okay. Oh, I'm saying the puppies. Me too. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, Scott's got to deal with them a whole lot worse than I do, but uh, I'm, hey. there's nothing cute about them. Yeah, no. like I said, a lot. Of, some people shoot coyote pups, doesn't bother them. Me, I'm like, yeah, you can shoot them. I mean, I'm not going to turn away if they want to do it, do it. But anyway, anyway, let's get on with it. I'll go through this quick, Scott, and then we're going to go with our with our favorite bullets here. Because are, are you reloading yet? I know you had all that reloading stuff when I was out. I have school. all the reloading stuff. And still haven't used any of it. <laughs> you know why? Here's the thing. Here's the thing, Jamie. You know, when I it takes a long time, I will say that. Well, here's the thing. When I came out to the ranch and started taking over out here, uh, your priorities go from a hundred percent you get to twist off every day of your life and go hunt something, or you have to try to keep your cattle alive or your calves alive. So uh, each shot is placed very carefully and i just don't go through enough ammunition at this point to have to reload yeah and i'm saving all the brass though don't get me wrong everything i do i'm saving brass i have all that i have the primers pulled out of them they're all ready to go just in case i need to start doing it but yeah i have not stepped into that hole yet plus i don't have really a place to set up a reloading area yeah, you're kind of uh, crowded down there. I remember got an old ranch house here. It's uh, very small, very tight and tiny, and and uh, not a lot of room. So yeah, unless uh, I get big sponsors like you that I can start <laughs> buying, you know, I'll put on a garage or a big shop or something. You know, maybe I'll that let would you happen. know if we start getting enough money from them to do that, buddy. <laughs> I'm just, hey, I'm just happy I got a, a free box of twenty two here. There you go. There you go. <laughs> But no, hey, if you don't have to reload, because it does. there's so many people that do it, you know, and and honestly, uh, everything that I shoot right now, factory has been working really well for me. So mm -hmm. it's not like I have to develop a load for any of my rifles. Yeah, and maybe that's why I use the rifles I do. Well, you know, factory loads now. I mean, I, honestly, some some that I reload. I mean, there's some factory loads that I can't, I mean, it's the same. And I'm just like, pfft, you know, why am I even doing this? Yeah. Which is a good thing about 223 because you can buy a lot of 223 in bulk that is good. 
ammo. And I'm not saying you're always going to just eat the, eat the hole out like a bug hole, man, but you're going to be able to get an inch or three quarter inch group for sure. Huh. And you know, uh, and you can buy it in bulk. I mean, yeah, it's not as cheap as it was, but God, it, you know what always got me that uh, Ultramax out of South Dakota when they used to have that? God dang, them soft points had them 55. And you could buy a 50-round box of them things for like 20 bucks, and those things would just shoot lights out. And then their place burned up, and they never went back in business, and it just devastated me. because You could buy, a, I think it was a 500-round box you could get. for That, that sucker was under $200. Yeah, it was saw points. It wasn't just you know FMJ banging steel. You know, you, well, you know, as you shoot a coyote with an FMJ, you can sit there and watch them run for the next five miles. <laughs> you know, unless you, you can do that them. if you. It depends on who's shooting. You can see that in any round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So all right, I'm going to quick run through these uh, my favorite loading powders here, and I'm. I'll tell you right now, I'm a I'm a ball powder guy because me and Scott were just talking about time or whatever, and, and I definitely don't blame you, Scott. You're running a ranch. Uh, my dad used to be a big race car driver. Once he bought his own farm, no more time for that. That went to the back of the bus, man. Which totally understandable because you got to make money and you got to eat. And uh, anyway, I my my favorite powder used to be tack. I switched over to W748, and the reason I, I did switch over to that, I'll tell you, Scott, because W748 Winchester sub actually made in the USA. TAC, not made in the USA. Love TAC, love TAC, clean burning, shoots good and damn near anything, but I was like, ah, you know, I'm going to stick with something made right here in good old USA. So W748 and TAC, H335, another one made in the USA. And like I said, they're ball powder. So as you know, temp sensitive, right? It's got more temp sensitive oh, yeah. ball powders. Yeah. And I have seen 335, to, in, in my experience of running them over the chrono, the most temp sensitive powder that I've used. I'm not saying there's other ones that aren't more than that, but that sucker will fluctuate like 100 feet per second from 90 degrees on the Prairie Dog Town to when I'm out, you know, I'll shoot it through the chrono and I'm going to go zero zero in the winter to shoot coyotes that sucker's down uh, 90 to 100 feet per second tack i've noticed about 70 w48 w748 was about 50 if you're going to go to stick i don't use stick i used to use stick um, there's a lot of people in this area that use that yeah yeah i mean if you had a powder trickler and you want to do one at a time but i like to shoot a ton and i'm like i'm not dealing with this stick right. shit in my powder dump rl15 great but what you can do, they're smaller stick, like the smaller extruded stuff, H322 or XB, XBR8208. But you shoot suppressed, then you're really getting dirty. That stuff, to me, is is dirty powder. My, I mean, I could tell in my AR, even in my bolt gun, I pull my bolt, up, bolt out and just, just gummed up in there. But, you know, if you're doing, you want to do high volume reloading, you know, you just re-zero it when it's cold out, and then you're good. And once, you know, April, May comes around, which, whatever. I, I, I enjoy going to the range and shooting groups. Some people hate it. You know, <laughs> my dad, I don't think he does. He just does it when it's warm out. And then he was shocked with a 17 once. I'm like, Dad, can we zero this in? Well, it's on. Well, then he was shocked when we actually did it. And then he's like, man, I'm just laying these things right on top of one another at 110. I'm like, yeah, burn a few rounds and zero it in, man. That's yep. It ain't like it's not fun, right? You can shoot. I, yeah. I so yeah. I don't know. Like I said, if you don't have to reload, Scott, man, I I totally get where you're coming from. I'm, I'm in Bismarck. I don't ranch. I mean, you're out there. You don't have. Get, we don't have access out. to a whole lot of the supplies. I guess you could say as much as a somebody in the urban area. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. 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 So all right, let's go on. You better catch up on some of the comments. Oh, There's man. some pretty yeah, good, good ones out here, appreciate man. Appreciate you uh, doing that for me because I get to rambling on. Like I said, sometimes you just got to say, how about you just shut up and uh, get to <laughs> – Shut up and to, hunt. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. All right. All right. So let's get back to where we were. Solid point. We got that one right, Meat Inspector. Eric Newman, Jamie, bring – Bring them down to South Dakota. Any antlerless tag for youth for $10. Thump a big mule. Awesome, man. Yeah. 
That's South great. Dakota has some great rules down there for kids, man. They really that do. is that is awesome. They I would nice I job. would love to do that. And hey, mule deer are my favorites. I don't people yeah. some people don't like them, but um, yeah, he said if you don't have the whitetail numbers up there, heck, do the early hunt and can get in the sod dog thumping too. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm definitely probably just as jacked up about killing prairie dogs as I am deer anymore. But uh, Eric Newman, I want to find a yote den. I want to have a mount with about five or six yote pups. <laughs> we were talking about that. Hey, I'm cool with that. As long as you don't shoot fox and baby. See, well, and that does. she's not down with that, which is fine. I'm- I've, I've only shot one fox, and I have that back here. Made a rug out of it because it had uh, polka-dotted legs. And it was kind of a rare thing wow. to see that yeah. black and white polka dotted legs on the front and the back. So I did shoot that one. But other than that, we usually don't have a lot of fox at the ranch here. But everywhere we go shoot coyotes, uh, they say the same thing. Don't shoot fox. That's the only thing that keeps uh, let's do rodents a, and everything else out of there, you know. Sometime down the road, let's do a predator show. And then you wear the fox and I'll wear the coyote fur or just around the neck for the whole show or whatever. That's, that's perfectly fine. I can do that. <laughs> okay. We're going to do that. Gene Cox, he said reloading is therapeutic. I, I heard that. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. I definitely would say that is more therapeutic than cleaning guns. Because, Like we said, cleaning guns, not therapeutic at all to me. One shot cap. Hey, Scott, breeding season for coyotes is nearing. Lock your dog up. Hello. Yeah, that's right. Because you said your dog was hammering on some, on some uh, female yeah. coyotes, right? Yeah, last year my boxer decided to uh well there was a coyote that kind of ran across the pasture and i don't know if you want me to tell the story or not yeah i do okay. go for it Absolutely. So anyway, my my boxer you know he's not the smartest on the breeds of dogs <laughs> out there <laughs> okay but he knew love when he seen it so he takes off after this female coyote and it was a you know getting to be of age female coyote yearling and and she oh, let him cooler. run, and, and I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm all balanced out. I'm the bail bed of my pickup. I had my six five ready to go, and I'm watching it all go down. And it's like, you're not going to shoot the coyote as he's doing his deed, right? I mean, and he put. <laughs> I would. I'd let him and, finish. And he is just letting it go, man. <laughs> and so there's a bro code. Yeah, there is absolutely. Let let him finish, right? Yep. And he got done, and I was sitting there thinking, that's just what I need is coyotes mixed with boxer <laughs> it's like built like a brick shit house coyote dog out there so he yeah. starts he starts coming back to the pickup with this look like yeah on his face you know yeah and she starts following him and he keeps coming and keeps coming and keeps coming and i finally whistle it i i don't know 500 yards and i dump, <laughs> i dumped her you know yeah and he, he just turned around he looked and he just came back to the pickup like yeah thanks for letting me finish buddy <laughs> I'm like, hey, that's the bro code. So, that's absolutely the bro yeah. code. Whether you're a you're a you're a man or you're watching your dog or whatever your <laughs> yeah. horse, I don't care. You're elk hunting, man. I Let him finish. Yeah, yeah. You know, die with a smile on her face. Yeah, yeah that would be some interesting pups. Yeah, because you imagine, <laughs> you know, eight, eighty pound coyotes and just solid as a rock oh, you know yeah yeah you, you pick up a you pick up your pet dog compared to when you go grab a dead coyote I mean, the coyote the dog's like picking up the freaking terminator he's just heavy, <laughs> dead weight. way more yeah way way more weight there um gene cox says he put premium factory load up against any reloadies i said what i said yeah i'm yeah. even gene i've actually shot even uh and i got pictures of groups i, I, I definitely would do it any it's the like the Fiocchi, you know. You can. That's actually probably like the cheapest. Is that bicycle. how you pronounce it? I think it's okay. Fiocchi, actually. But, <laughs> but yeah, that stuff. And I had the ballistic tips. I thought was pretty good, and I actually shot the soft points. Kicked out. Soft points are unbelievable. So yeah, it, those things kick ass. I definitely would. I have two boxes of uh, I say Fiocchi, but so a deer hunter brought them to me. Two twenty three rounds. I tried to use them on coyotes. I had no luck with them. The ballistic tip or the soft point? I'd have to go and grab a box. I'm not positive because I put them away in a. <laughs> what I green didn't. were they? <sighs> <laughs> All right, I'm nerding out on you too yeah. much. All right, yeah, Gene Cox, Scott's dog. I was thinking the same thing. And Eric Newman said 26 greens of H335, 55 green 
bullet guts gold into him. Josh Patterson, there'd be some interesting looking pups. <laughs> Dougie Wolf, any loving is good loving. That's right, Doug. <laughs> but I remember um, Travis George and I, I, we, I texted you. We were going up to Golden Valley one morning and listening to you. And then we said, I'll be going up there tomorrow night, baby. Yeah, that's right. You have Shreve for Red Angus sale, right? That's right, yeah. I'm going up Saturday, but um, yeah. And we said brown chicken, brown cow, and Trav and I were like, what the hell does that mean? (laughs) (laughs) We found out shortly thereafter. (laughs) Oh, so, all right, Scott. So your varmints, let's let's just go prairie dog. What's your favorite prairie dog bullet for? Just to go out there in the middle of the town and it's, plink all day? Yeah, it's pretty Seven, 17 HMR. All right, so look, since this is a 223 show, give me I know it is. <laughs> what do you got for 223? Oh, if I'm going to use a 223 in Prairie Dogs? Yeah, yeah. What's I'm, your, I'm using the same old, oh, I'm using a Hornaday. Uh, uh, 53 or 55 green V Max. Once you do what box of them you gave me when I was out there after. Yeah, absolutely, I and it's it. and it's part of the 15,000 rounds that Keith Warren left me after <laughs> yeah. they came out and shot. So I still not through all of those rounds yet. That was uh yeah. 55 green. It was a V Max bullet yep. owner day custom, as I yep. recall. So same thing you're getting. My my favorite environment bullet 50 green Sierra, um, Blitz King, absolutely devastation. So predators, so coyotes, fox. And what do you got for that? Same thing. Yeah, same ammo. That's all I have right now. You know, I have that Fiocchi stuff, and I had to just put it away because it just didn't. In my rifle, it wasn't shooting as accurately as the uh, the V Max was. Bring it down. I'll trade you for some. Okay. Um, Fifty me for coyotes for sure, and usually what I get, what I got in my AR when I'm up at the farm is uh 55 green Nosser ballistic tip varmints work freaking awesome, man. So if you're going to shoot a deer, Scott, let's go to that deer and antelope, you know, mid side, you know, what, 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 what are you, what are you going to? Same here? stuff. I dropped them with the VMAX. Really? Yeah. You sound like my dad. He shot like this big mule deer. I'm like, what do you use? And he'd come out and show me the box. I'm like, those are varmint bullets, dad. And he's yep. like, well, I killed a big varmint. And I was like, all right, you got me there. <laughs> yeah, man, I, <laughs> same mini, stuff, man. Hey, out of if I, 14 at like 200 yards. Here's the thing. It's it's at the, the same rifle. It's shooting accurately. I know where it hits. Yep. And it's about shot placement. So if I can kill a prairie dog and hit something this big, I yeah. should be able to hit the heart of a, of a white tail or mule deer. Yeah. So... <laughs> Off topic for once, do you ever take people out who just shoot targets to shoot prairie dogs and it just absolutely wrecks their ego because they can't hit them? Every time somebody from the city comes out. Right. And I'm, when I say city, I mean like uh, New York or L.A. or Oh, Houston, no, I've had them from Dallas. Bismarck do that. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, we get down and I'm like, I didn't like shooting that gong, is it? <laughs> yeah, but I hit it in the head every time. Yeah, I know, but now you're shooting at a beer can out here at 300, man. It's yeah. a whole different... Yeah, beer can. I'm saying beer can size, but yeah. So like deer, like I said before, sixty beer grand. can size. Holy cow, that's small. <laughs> well, that's a pu- that's a little pups when they're out there in me, right? <laughs> <laughs> I like I said, I I'd go with the sixty two grain that I do now, but but before it was a fifty five grain. Yeah. You know, Sierra Blitz, not Blitz King, but Game King. So I mean, crushed them, blew the lung. I mean, lung shot done. I mean, the things were. And like I said, my dad used a varmint out of his mini 14, of all things. Wow, mini yeah. 14. With wow. irons, man, with irons. And he is deadly I, with iron sights. That's awesome. <laughs> I loaded up some of these 64 grain. I told you these Nosler Bond, like the FBI uses them now, and we did a gel test. I wouldn't, I'd definitely be in right through the shoulder 200. I'd do it with that, and hmm. it'd be game over. So, like, if you got home defense, you're just, you're just like the, you're sticking with that 55 grain. Same thing, man. I got a lot of them. And I know where they hit. So here's what I tell you about that. Uh, Axe and I did a, we did a test on a number of 223 rounds, just like, you know, 10 yards away, point blank. And, you know, everybody's like, "You what? this is what you need for your home defense round. And no, I will tell you right now, the best thing him and I shot, 50 grain, either the VMAX, the – uh, Sierra Blitz King or the 55 grain, they go in and absolutely blow up and they penetrated. I mean, we got a video on YouTube and Facebook, whatever. If you want to look it up, I'm not going to do it right now, but they went in about five to eight. Yeah, I think the 55 grain went a little deeper, about eight inches. 
So that's not going through your wall, man, at all. Right, what that's doing right. is going in and vaporizing some piece of trash's organs who uh, broke into your house or or whatever is doing something. You, that you is my, that's what I'm using as a ballistic tip for self-defense, home defense. So whatever. I was doing a little research there. Sorry to cut you off there. No, but, go ahead. Uh, I was doing some research about the myths about the 223. <laughs> and this came up on a forum. It said tumbling bullets, tumbling bullets are the salesman BS when it comes to M60 and going through trials. These claims, uh, if you're going to shoot somebody in a home self-defense and you use a 223, once they hit somebody, they start tumbling, and you should use a 308 so it goes through them, <laughs> and it goes through the wall, and on the next wall, I'm like, that's BS. <laughs> The 308 is going to start tumbling once it hits a, a human body too. So, uh. I you know, so ballistic gel, man, it's pretty cool, Scott. You got you got to check some of this stuff out. It I, you know what tumbled was, and I'm not yeah, even going to say. But I'm talking about walls here. I mean, they're talking. It's going to go through walls. I'm like, ballistic gel is different than two by four or two by eight. Uh, I've seen uh, that, so. the guy from um, Gun Talk do sheetrock. Yeah. Two sheetrocks. They did that. I mean, I think a lot of stuff like that until you see it, it just check it out on YouTube. Just go through that. I'll have to because I'll, I'll stick with the 223. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. Like I'm telling you. And if you're going to do it and you're worried my, about over. My tinnitus in my left ear says that the higher, bigger calibers, I'm not going to shoot them as much anymore unless they have a suppressor on it. You get, yeah, oh, I, yeah, yeah. I 100% agree there too. But, but I mean, you go, if you go with a 308, that's, you're shooting probably a 150. Compared to whatever, yeah. 55. You're not I mean, even going apples to apples here. The more weight is more penetration. Unless you, if you're shooting a full metal jacket in your house, that's that's stupid. But I mean, if that's all you got, kneel down and shoot up through their chin or something. But who yeah. wants who wants to wreck their TV behind them? Yeah, come on now. You're like I said. I if you use a ballistic tip, man, you're not going through them. No, we tested it with multiple rounds. And that that's what I'm telling you. That that is my hundred percent home defense round is I got a mag from if it gets to my AR, it's <laughs> and then, so what about a pistol, a hollow point? Yeah, that thing that would have blew right through a person. And we had like the biggest pedal out nine millimeter, and that thing penetrated like 14 inches. That would go right through most really? people. Yeah, most people aren't 14 inches wide. And if you yeah. have a dad bod, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was impressive, man. It was I was really impressive with the nine millimeter. And like you said, the 17, we did that one too, Scott. I would definitely recommend that if somebody's breaks in your house, you got in that ballistic tip, because that's what we use as really? a hornet, right? What is it, 32 yeah. grain or 17, yeah. 20 grain? It was, I think. Yeah, yeah absolutely. 20, 22 bump, grain. Huh? What in about like the AR did and blew up in there. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's you're stopping somebody with that when that thing opens up in there. And as like an all-purpose round, we know what Scott's answer is, the 55-grain ballistic tip. I'm going, if I'm just like, if somebody's like, you can only have one round ever for a 223, I'm going with the 55-grain soft point. Because yep. I've seen that thing dump deer. Um, myself did it, and I've seen it, you know. I'm sticking with, sticking with mine because I, I, it's proven to me. I, yep. I've seen it. I've used it on everything. Yep, yep. So what do you got? Let's go into a little bit uh your favorite 223 rifle, Scott. Are you a, are you an AR man? Are you a lever? Do you go do you go to single shot? What's your favorite one? Cuz they they make them in everything. I mean, the 223 rifles are made in, in everything. So here's the reason I went from ARs to bolt rifles is because I was hunting a tournament uh that was a Mandan Coyote tournament out of the it was back when it was the 7 Cs. That's yep. how long ago it was. <laughs> Jesse Flath long. and myself, we uh, went up to Hazen and we were hunting. I think it was actually illegal, but this is over seven years, so the statute of limitations is over on that. <laughs> but we were hunting some of the spill piles on some of the old mines. And he had his AR, and I had my bolt action. And his AR going in and out of the pickup, it was 30-some below zero ambient temperature. Yep. It was just bitter. The calling was great. The coyotes come in when it's that cold out. They're really hungry. And his firing pin would freeze up all the time on his AR. 
so I was shooting the coyotes and doing that, and he was getting frustrated and would thaw it out and go in again, get out of the pickup, and it would freeze up again. Mm -hmm. So after that whole thing, if I'm going to use anything, it's going to be a bolt rifle. I do, I really, really wish I could find a 223 lever action that I could carry with on my saddle. Yeah. Just so it doesn't have that bolt sticking out of it. And it's just easier to get in and out with. But I've, I don't know if, I don't even know if they make those. I got good news item. for you. What's that? Um, Henry, not only do they make the Long Ranger, which comes in 223, but this year at Shot Show, they just come out with another one. It's the Long Ranger, not, doesn't even have a hammer, hammerless, lever action. Really? Barrel's already threaded. And Scott takes 223 megs or any other mag is flush fitting mag that goes. That's in there. awesome. They, the, like the mag pull, you can put a beta drum in that sucker if you want. And they claim the sucker shoots lights out. Like, and I know, the, I know the long rangers do. The long rangers are. So, yeah, I mean, I, I would say if that's what you're looking for, like I said, you can't even snag the hammer pulling it out if you get a scabbard or something. Right. That sucker is. Yeah, no, it's threaded I it for you. Yeah, Gene Cox just said, I think Henry makes one. You just said it. Yeah. Yep, but yep. I, I'm telling you, I, uh, that would be what I'd like to go to. The AR, yeah. I, I think from what I use on a daily basis, an AR is not conducive to how much mm -hmm. dirt and grime I go through in a day and yeah. not cleaning my rifles on a regular basis. Uh, I think that would get a little bit too gummed up for me. Um, no, I you know, valid but points. Valid points. If, if I was living in southern Texas and trying to protect my ranch from all the illegals coming in, yeah, absolutely, I'd pull out my Timber Creek redone AR here and get after it. Well, you got to have one because Clay and I had that gal on from Farm Bureau, and they have a ranch down there, and she said all the illegals coming over. You know what they're carrying? They're carrying freaking AR. So, yep. Uh, well. It's all over the place. Yeah. You can't own guns what? in Mexico. You mean the United States is selling guns to other people? What? No. Probably for me. <laughs> what? All right. Before I'm going I'm to give you my opinion, but first I'm going to get to these comments. Josh Patterson says he shoots the 40 grain V Max Fioki and 223 for prairie dogs. They work well in them. And I can vouch for that. My buddy Brian has probably the, this thing's like a unicorn. It's, it is an AR, but that guy can put like, turkish junk in there and that thing will shoot a half inch <laughs> <laughs> and he come down one year shooting prairie dogs um and he's like yeah i got some fiokis and i and he had the blue tip and i'm like those aren't 50 grainers i told you buy 50s they're not and i'm like no because he didn't you know he just i got 223 man but they shot way high because these things were smoking out of there and he was launching prairie dogs like nobody's business so those are awesome Turkish uh, junk. Turkish man, I gotta say though, I, sh I got some Turkish ammo. Over somebody shot good, but the was, primers are blowing out of them. It was what was that? The Mosin Nagant rifle. Where was that made? Is that a Yugoslavian? No, nope, Russian. Russian. Yeah, okay. yeah, World War One, World War Two. Okay. Yeah, Mosin's. I mean, slow as slow as molasses and throwing cannonballs, but they're not. <laughs> Doug's got. We're gonna do a, a video on one with the. We're gonna use a bayonet and stab some watermelons too. So. Gene said Gene doesn't even own a 223. He says everybody loves the discussion. Thanks, Gene. I'm having a blast. Well, hold on now. Man. He's an old school lever action dude. Yep. Maybe, maybe now oh. he might get into the 223 for the long. <laughs> yeah. See, I always was wondering why um why they why gun companies wouldn't do that more. Because I'm a I love lever le shooting lever actions is a freaking blast, man. They're they're nice and skinny, they're they're easy, they're just, yeah, for what you said, carrying them yeah. around, I mean, they are yeah. so freaking handy. It's unreal. Eric Newman says, uh, Barnes TTSX 55 grain for deer in our two. Yep, I've heard that from a lot of people. Um, one shot cap, my son inherited my Mini 14. Yeah, Mini 14s look badass, but to this day, I have never seen one of them things shoot under like a, a volleyball group at 100. Okay, so I was, this was in the 90s. And a buddy of mine had a mini 14 and we were deer hunting and I didn't know what it was at that time. Mm -hmm. You're right. It took him. Oh, terrible. 13, 14 shots to finally hit a deer. And the deer was just standing there because he was nowhere close to it. Yeah. They're, they're but he did. But when he did hit it, it did drop. 
So yeah, once I told you my dad got his with that many, I mean, he must have been lucky because he had the varmint bullet and he dropped it in one shot. He should have been using the VMAX. I'm telling yeah. you, <laughs> that's what he was using. <laughs> so my cousin James, go for the Henry. They're awesome out of the box, right on. Yeah, I mean that's that's awesome, man. Mike Mike Deacons, newest Mitchell, guy South the- Dakota. Yeah, the guy who actually made the commercials, Deke. You're doing a great job. Your commercials are awesome, and I love it. He said uh, had so much more. I had so much fun. Show Moss and Ammo go bad and what? I don't, can you read that one, Scott? I'm reading it just like you did. <laughs> corrode. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is Mosin Mosin Ammo go bad and corrode? Oh, God, Mosin yeah. them gone Ammo. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry, just sorry. Oh, it's it's <laughs> terrible. I'm telling you right now. I mean, yeah. we did that as an NRA. I had one. I bought a box of ammo, and it, like, he's right. It corroded in no time. Yeah, yeah, it's like you get some AK ammo. It's it's my my buddy yeah. Wyatt shot some. Um, Josh Patterson, my boy Savage Six Five Creed is the, is the way that rifle will shoot any and group. It will even shoot the cheap junk. Yeah, yeah, I got. I my buddy was complaining about. I think he was kind of half kidding, but he said, you know, an AR won't shoot you with full metal jacket under five inch group. I got a bunch of different kinds of FMJ. I'm gonna do a test because my, my AR will shoot that stuff pretty damn good, actually. Really. Good. Yeah, yeah. Um, Trampus Brenner. I use an AR in cold weather. I use two stroke oil instead of gun oil. They're that is in their that that is freaking hilarious because when we <laughs> checked into the gun tournament, the when DPMS was still a a, a company yep. out of out of uh, Somalia over there in Minneapolis, <laughs> yeah, a little Somalia, yeah, Saint Cloud, yep. <laughs> and uh, uh, Jesse was complaining to the guy. He's like, my D, it just it froze up. He's like, just used uh, two stroke oil on it. And Jesse's like, that's bullshit. That ain't ever going to work. And here's a guy that's backing it up. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So, I mean, but, it will. Who, but I didn't have – who has two-stroke motorcycle oil just laying around that's going to take it out coyote hunting? We didn't even think it was going to be a problem. I would tell you, Scott, that a lot of people overlook it, and I've tested this shit and below zero, way below zero, and just like REM oil, especially like the Gen 2 REM oil. Perfect. Buy the, buy the, if you don't want to sit there and put it on real nice and pretty, get yourself the aerosol can. Yeah. Wait, put, I gear that thing will run, you know, it'll run freaking, it'll run perfect. So my favorite 223 rifle, I'm, you know, I used to be 100% AR and I'm still going to favor the AR for sure. But, but that Henry is freaking badass i do love i gotta it. look that up and it's and, got nice yeah. wood on it man and i'm not a wood guy either i'm definitely but that thing is freaking awesome anything that can take a big magazine like that oh you don't need that right i don't need it but, but i, I sure don't like having it in there yeah if i'm shooting prairie dogs i don't want a five round and i damn sure don't want the damn top loader i don't care if it's a flush fit five rounder i want that son of a bitch i can pop it out and you know and I, I want a big magazine in case I need it. Well, what are you ever going to need that for? Hell if I know, but I guarantee if somebody breaks in my house, I'm not going to go, thank God I only have a five-round magazine. I'll be like, damn, if I got a beta drum, guess what's going in? But to get off topic, I I got Ruger. Man, my Ruger American ranch is so close to second place on my AR. It does outshoot it in accuracy a little bit for sure. Man, but you know what? Here's my main thing I don't like about having an AR on the ranch, Scott. You got one in the chamber, right? And then let's say you, you see a coyote. Well, then he gets away from you. Bolt action. Drop the mag or whatever. Pop the round out. Put it back in. AR, you got to grab that freaking charging handle and then catch the son of a bitch or go against the seat. And he, I, That is my one thing that I absolutely detest about AR-15. You should put a oversized charging handle on. No, I'm saying I don't like that. I have to use that to eject it. It's oh. so much easier to take oh, the I round see. out with a I bolt guess. or even yeah. you know, even like this lever, actually, you know. Just you pull your mag out, click. But even that would throw a little bit, but I don't care. You know, I'm I don't I, I just I there's so many rifle options for the 223. I, I I mean that's another reason I think that's a great caliber for people to get in on. But it's a great caliber. If yeah. you don't if you know, I know Gene Cox doesn't own a 223, but this is why he should. Yeah. You know, he's got probably one round. He's got a caliber of everything in his arsenal. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. And he said yeah. he does have a twenty two two fifty, so he's got it covered. And I know a lot of people will say, yeah, I got that twenty two two fifty way faster. It is. A lot of people don't know this, Scott. 
Um, and it is going to be a lighter bullet. I, I will grant you that. But uh, Winchester has a varmint bullet. It's a 40 grainer. Uh, ballistic tip, 4,000 feet per second. Holy moly. That's a 223. I know Hornady has a super performance. It's right underneath that. But me personally, I've never found super performance ammo to shoot. Really good groups that I like. I know you kill shit with your Creed. I never shot a super performance at, in Creed, but my 223s never worked well for me. But you have witnessed me shoot something with super performance yeah, yeah. in no, my I'm Creed. Not, yeah. yeah. yeah I know. thought I missed a damn antelope, and you're like, oh, no, you didn't. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's got, yeah, pump yeah. house that sucker. At, what was it? 500, right? 505. Yeah. Right, yeah. right in the heart. Right in the heart. She spun around three or four times and tipped over. It was great. I saw the, <laughs> yeah. You're like, you missed. I'm like, now the blood's pumping out. I can see it. So <laughs> that, <laughs> that was, was a great hunt man that was and people that are listening i mean if you don't know this hunt he's like i i have a antelope tag coming down scott i'm like all mm -hmm. right and he showed up i don't know let's say five o'clock at 5 45 yeah. we came back to the shop with two antelope <laughs> and he's like i never would have thought that ever in my life no way no how and then yeah, that's when i introduced you to the up. yeah and that's when i introduced you to the uh the uh water fire extinguisher to help clean up oh that was awesome yeah. man yeah that was very yeah that, that was a freaking fun <laughs> hunt and we had good times and then the next day we went out and just crushed prairie dogs dude that was freaking so many crazy. prairie dogs yeah i'm like where are we sitting you're like nowhere just stay in a truck <laughs> okay i'll wheel you around man just lean over the mirror yep so, but and so if you get into like a heavier deer like a, like you want a deer hunting around federal power shock 64 grainers i mean you're going over 3000 of course that's in the 24 inch barrel but yeah even under that that 64 grain is going to be a it's going to be a hammer on deer so it's it's all kind of barrel life i mean that's another big positive with not only just a 223 but a 308 i mean on the low end if you beat the living shit out of your barrel you're going to get 10,000 rounds if you shoot a lot and you don't heat that barrel up like oh, way overheated you're gonna go to 20 my stag yeah. has a lifetime guarantee on the barrel you know what the military you know what the military's requirement is scott for moa no i would be unacceptable to me at 100 <laughs> yards five inches that's five ridiculous. inches that's ridiculous in my opinion five you know inches. what that reminds me of you remember in 2000 was it 2011 or 2010 when there was too many cow elk in the badlands <laughs> yeah and in order yeah. to get on, they wanted to bring sharpshooters. And then they said, okay, there was a fight against that. And they're like, okay, we're using local people. Yeah. And the only requirement is you had to hit a paper plate at 100 yards. 10 inch. 10 inch paper yep. plate at 100 yards. If you hit it, you were in on the hunt. Yeah. I'm like, damn, I'm going to be able to hit that with a spear, that's man. That's unacceptable. <laughs> 10 well, that's the old thing, paper plate, right? Yeah. get the paper plate all right i'm gonna do we're gonna tell you what we're gonna do one more ad for just just gonna be a single get it done they're the ones making this happen my friend yeah right on all right here we go and i need here to get come. rid of this three dog junk yeah you do i'm gonna I'll tell you what when i come back i got a few things from shot remember i said i'm gonna give you some great news about that burris eliminator so i'm gonna look there. it up yeah <laughs> eliminator four look it up right now Auto Repair, located at 309 South Washington Street in Bismarck, North Dakota. Give them a call at 701-258-6308. The team of mechanics at Lauer Auto can take care of any problem your vehicle is having. And when you do business with Lauer, you can be assured you're doing business with a pro Second Amendment America First Repair Shop. There are plenty of other auto repair shops in the Bismarck Mandan area. But why take a chance at patronizing a shop that might not have your beliefs at heart? Make no mistake make no mistake lower auto is your pro second amendment repair shop when you talk to the guys at lower auto don't forget to tell them that you heard they are sponsor of guns and the 701 and that you appreciate their support of our pro second amendment pro north dakota live stream and podcast that's lower auto repair 701-258-6308 701-258-6308 located 309 south washington street in bismarck north dakota Right on, Scott. And I'll tell you what, if, if you're out there listening or you catch it on the podcast and you think uh, the 223 is a poodle shooting piss ant, here, I got something <laughs> for you. Nasty person. 
<laughs> right on, Fred. Hey, Scott. So we're going by the ammo ranks. Remember when I told you the two twenty three is a, is a number one center fire? Can you guess what number two is? This is twenty twenty two data. Twenty twenty two second best caliber. Yep, second most popular best caliber rifle center fire. Number two behind two twenty three. Um, I'm going to say two forty three. Nope, six point five Creed more. Is that right? Yep, six point five. Right? I'll, run, I'll run through the top twelve here for you. Do that. I'm. This is curious because everybody made fun of me for being a six five guy before six fives are cool, including me and including you. you Here's the me. thing: I don't care what you shoot. I'm not one of those racist caliber guys, right? Like, like some biggest, people are. I really player. don't. I really don't care, but. I really like the round. So give me what's number 12. All right. All right. So Let, okay. and I'm going to see if I have them in my gun safe. Number 12 shocked me. Actually, I didn't even know uh, 7 mm 8 number 12. Yeah. Got one of those. So we're going, let's go back up here to number four. You will never guess number four. There's no, I would have never guessed this either. And I, I don't understand the fascination with this thing, but whatever I've shot them does nothing for me. 300 blackout number four. I don't have one of those. Number five. This is almost probably all right. Four fifty Bushmaster. I know one guy who owns it, but but you know what, Scott? To be fair, we live up where it's flat and we like longer right. distance. So number six. Here we go. Everybody knows this one. The old thirty odd six. I right? got one of those thirty thirty you odd bet. six. Coming in at number seven, your father in law's favorite. Three hundred baby. Three hundred. Yeah, number seven. Three hundred win Meg. Eight. Which I'm surprised this jumped up here. I have shot them, and they are badass. Six two seventy PRC. Oh, nope. Oh, six PRC. Okay. All right, I'll give you here. Well, okay, here let me going. ask you this: What's yeah. the difference between the Creedmoor and the PRC? Uh PRC's got a bigger case. Do they? Same okay. bullet, bigger case, so you're getting more velocity. You okay. know, I, I I haven't jumped into the PRC side yet. And I tell you what recoil for that for that big. I saw that case and I was like, God, it looks like a kit new. I think like a kitten and just money money my dad's neighbor tanner dobeck his dad had his out there and i mean at 800 yards we were just pounding the gong with that thing have you heard anybody with the six five three hundred no okay, I, so. I mean i know of it but i know i don't know anybody who has I'm, that i that thing's I, gotta yes. be a, everybody's going like the six five or the 22 creed now right 22 Creed, 26 Creed, 28. I have a 28 Nosler, yeah. And I'm not against none yeah. of that stuff, but that 's so oddball. I mean, you got – I mean, oh, I don't, so 22 fun, Creed though. might start – yeah, they are just ultra flat. So, all yeah. right, Scott, let's go. Keep number going. nine, co coming in number nine behind the 6.5 PRC. You do know this one, but give me your guess, number nine. Number nine, 270. Dry, you know German? Dry null Ocht. My my folks spoke German <laughs> when they didn't want us to know what they were saying yeah. about us. Three oh eight, number nine, still hanging in there in the top top ten. So number ten, number ten, um, you know this one. And, and in my opinion, if I had a good shoulder, this would be my number one hunting cartridge, probably. Number one with a good shoulder, three thirty eight Lapua, seven mm Remington Magnum. Oh, okay, still badass and eleven. N11, you definitely know this one. Uh, your savage guys were shooting the hell out of prairie dogs with this 22, one. 22 250s. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And just in case anybody's wondering, they say rifle cartridge, but number one, number two is 223 center fire. Number one, 22 long rifle. Bye. Really? Yeah. Number and wow. and I'm going to just transition right into the 22, Scott. This is you like shooting 22s? I used to until I found out what a 17 HMR was. <laughs> okay so this is this my this blew my mind i just saw this like two weeks ago um so you don't generally associate the 22 with long range stuff right um norma norma ammo is coming out with something called the extreme long rifle 22 load they're promising this thing is accurate not to 500 scott but beyond beyond that and they got it. It says the lead bullet, which is weird to me, just a lead bullet, right? And they get it's, they got a couple things they did to it. One of them, they call it this rocket tail. It just looks like you ever throw them football things? It looks like a. No, no. I know what you're talking about. I haven't thrown it. Yeah, though. they look like a mortar round. That's what this yeah. thing kind of looks like to me. But yeah, they got that at 43 grainer. Velocity is listed 1165. 
uh, 50 rounds are going, they're saying 25 bucks. But if it's a 22 and the sucker can shoot 500 yards accurately, I'm done with shooting that thing. That's what's the, what's the what's the impact? Though? I mean, I mean, what's the yeah? I'm not saying for kill and stuff, but for target, okay. I I didn't get I didn't get two. I don't I don't think they even had the ballistics put up there because they just came out with this right before a shot show. But they're saying for shooting 500 plus yards, consistent speed and grouping. So I'm. All right, so I got a guy that you need to get on your show here. Okay. His name is Sean Burns out of Scranton, North Dakota. When I had Keith Warren up here for doing a executive retreat with a Savage Company in the whole works, mm -hmm. I brought him up, and he did a demonstration with his twenty-two long rifle at 800 yards. Damn. And we put a target out there, and by golly, he was ringing that thing. And he was the national... 22 champion of uh, some competition he was in and the rifle that he put together and the, I don't know what ammo he was using, but that's a guy that's, uh, there's some pretty impressive people here in the Dakota territory that have done some pretty amazing things be besides just military too. But, uh, right. and him and his dad, man, they are just, uh, those are the guys that you want to talk Oh, I'd love with, it. Man. Imagine, they know so that stuff. Imagine yeah. what this guy could do if this ammo is for oh, real. Imagine God, what he can yeah. do with that. Yeah, it's right? not like you're reloading 22 long rifle. <laughs> yeah, I actually know a guy who does it. I'm like, you really? never get me to reload that shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He lives in Gene. Gene Cox knows him. He lives down over. So let's get to a few comments here. And then I'm going to, I'm going to, did you get, did you check up on that Burris? I'm telling no, you. No, I didn't because I was still looking. At, All right, well, hang on. I'm going to, I'll so, get you Somebody from here. South Dakota is messaging me. And he says the bar's open, and he's listening to us. And he posted this picture right here. <laughs> and I tried to awesome. send him a picture of my hams beer, and it won't go through because I don't know. Well, if you're listening to South Dakota in a bar, man, I appreciate you. I tell you what, yeah. you're in Bismarck, I can get you. I got a free hat for you, can koozie. Speaking of drinks, Michael Deacons says <laughs> he thinks uh, we got better beverages than Clay and Vance in him. <laughs> well, we're. Where of course. Josh I don't know about that. Yeah, that Mitchell area has got some entertainment. Well, he's so. saying just drinks. Our drinks on air are a lot better than theirs. What do they have on there? I don't know. Clay's got some Alabama moonshine. And oh, I, guess I thought Vance, they were talking like black Vance leaf probably drinks tea water or something. And Deacon's, I don't, he's an old Marine. I'm not sure what them guys. Them guys will drink anything, right? The old devil dogs. Well, but uh, if you Josh dare Patterson, them to. Yeah. <laughs> Josh Patterson says he loves a 7M M08. Gene Cox is a 6.5 by 300 at 264 wind mag. Nah, not way more, way more powder. It's like a 300. It's a 300 wind mag case neck down to a 6.5. So you can you can find the 6.5 300 rifles, but you can't find ammo. You know, it, I, it's it's a unicorn ammo is what it is. The reason for that is Scott. I've called like Sierra and Hornaday and talk to their, they're going contrary to popular belief. There still is like ammo. You can't find they're going only with, they do a extremely small amount of yeah. stuff like that, but yeah. they're going with like your three Oh eight, your six, five creeds, your two twenty three stuff. That's popular. Points. The stuff that right. people are buying. Right. Yeah. They're like, Hey man, we got, they got the war and the, you know, the, the materials for that. There are two wars, you know, and everybody's buying it up here because the meat puppet and his regime want to ban every damn thing that has a freaking firing pin and a primer. So we got to deal with that. But uh, that, that's and, why. Oh, and cow farts. Don't forget about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cow's farting. You got to ban that, right? Uh, all right. Hornaday commercialized a 220, 22 Creed. Good. Good. I mean, man, I think that's actually going to take off because I know a lot of people that are getting like rifles built for them and the ballistics are just freaking out of the world on that. You want to have a story about a 22 Creed? Yeah. 20, uh, yeah. So, uh, Baker, another guy you need to get on your show, Jake Wagner. Yeah. Yeah. I met okay. Jake at, uh, yeah. at the, the, gun the Yeah. So, anyway, he uh, has this one rifle table last year, uh, 2022, not 2020, two years ago now. And uh, we're doing this thing. And this little six year old girl goes up to her dad and says, Dad, I want that rifle. And it's 22 Creed. And he says, well, what are the tickets? He said, 50 bucks a ticket. But it's a limited draw tickets, right? Mm -hmm. And she said, but that's the one I want. 
So we gave her 50 bucks, got one ticket. She won the damn rifle that night. <laughs> she That's won awesome, the right, yeah, That was perfect. I actually think I remember you guys talking about that. I was sitting on my buddy's uh, cartel boat down in Tampa Bay listening yeah. to you guys. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, that, yeah. that is an awesome I story. think they I call those uh, cigarette boats down there. So this, no, this is a big cab, a cartel boat, man. It's a big. It was awesome, man. It was, thanks, Brad. You're freaking awesome, bro. <laughs> but uh, speaking of raffles, Scott, um, Clay and I um, and uh, Deacons of uh, the Guns in the Seven Hundred One Crew, Seven Hundred One Nation. Guess what? We're doing a raffle flamethrower, baby. We're doing a flamethrower raffle. You Maybe. know, you should do a demonstration of using it on net wrap. Clay damn near lit my hair on fire with it today trying to demonstrate it for okay. me. <laughs> but it's pretty cool, man. It, you can either go right under your statues to your rail on your on your, oh, a lot of people say oh, I got rails on my bolt guns because I like having lights on them. Do that and or or you know, you can take it off and use it uh, just it, just you know, hand without a gun and just hands free. It's freaking awesome. They're gonna be 20 bucks. Get hold of me, Clay, Deacons. Um, and they're going to be all over the place. So I'm definitely going to have to have you buy one of those from us, guy, because I think you can use a flamethrower down there. Can't oh, you? hell yeah. I could use it the, every damn day. Yeah. Every right. day. <laughs> so I'm going to get through the, so these we, comments. So, so we burn our own garbage out here. We don't have garbage pickup. So we we, we need that. I mean, what's fun or yeah. a freaking match or a flamethrower? Come on. This is an easy, right? Yeah. <laughs> so... 270, I'm not sure what Clay said there, 264 Wick. I'm not, know what the, G. Oh, they're, they're still talking about the 6.5 uh, by 300. Oh, I think, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. I think Clay might have hit a K instead of an N there, but um, Gene, yeah, he was ahead of its time. Deacons, anything? Okay, Scott, I, I know I like No, Deacon drug. says he'll drink anything because okay. he's a. Awesome. Yeah. Deacons, you come up here for 2A day, we're going to get it on, man. It's going to be a good. <laughs> have, you, have you ever met mike deacons no no i've oh, never man. met him in person well you are i don't know if you're man enough to know this guy maybe not he seems he's, he's pretty he's pretty uh alpha he's got uh he's got a reputation there's a reason that he lives in mitchell south dakota and not in minneapolis <laughs> there's a reason. perfect i'm sorry sounds like i'm gonna get along with him good so, and, do, and whatever you do, don't wear a tweed jacket near him either. He'll make fun of you. I don't even know what tweed night. is, Scott. I know, but there's a guy in Lemon, South Dakota, that did. And I, I think Mike Deacons gave him so much. I, I think he finally <laughs> threw it in the garbage by the end of the night. It was, <laughs> it was Perfect. great. Tweed great. sounds like something a uh, leftist is going to wear, but all right. So maybe not. Like I said, I don't know what Picked tweed is. Picked up some pretty good looking girls so with it. So. Um, okay, I'm married. Proof so is in the pudding. <laughs> So, I know Scott's a big burst eliminator man, and I used his, and I shot a couple. They are. What do we got here? Oh, they they're they're talking about the tweed jacket now. So they they know what I'm talking about between jacket. Clay and between Clay and and Mike Deacons. They know what I'm talking. Oh about. yeah, they're getting after yeah. it. So, yeah, I'll get the <laughs> so, uh, okay. burst eliminator. Burst. I saw it come up as I follow burst. And come on, give me a new one for me. Yep. You're going to love this, man, because I, I think I'm finally going to break it. Because, you know, my main thing was they were bulky. This thing looks like a regular rifle scope, Scott, with like a 30-millimeter tube. Same drops, range finder on the side. It looks like a normal scope. And just on, like, the top quarter, all your stuff, your temperature's on there, um, your 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 elevation. It's like a freaking, like a high-dollar range finder on the top of this thing. doesn't interfere with your, with your uh, Chevron tree in there. Same amount, but it's a normal size scope, not that big thing. It's freaking looked awesome. It looked awesome. I don't know what the price is. I mean, is is it the four? Yeah, it's a brand new one. Okay. Maybe I said four. Maybe I don't know. Like, I haven't looked at them for a while, but I need a new one. It looks just like a regular rifle scope. That's as I seen it, and I'm like, there's no way that's an eliminator. And I got into it a little more and looked, and I'm like, hell yeah, it is. That's freaking oh. awesome. According to the web. Bruce Eliminator has a five now too. Maybe okay, you're maybe that's about what it is. Maybe maybe I'm behind. But yeah, that thing looks freaking awesome, and it's more compact. And you know, I'd be way in on that thing. So, yeah. hey, Bruce, if you're listening, uh... <laughs> don't be a product. Don't be a product whore now. Come on, Jamie. <laughs> I might be for that thing because I was watching that, going, "Yes." Oh well, man. I mean, So re re really, people, Scott, 
people a, t- called me a cheater. They, and I was no. one of the first ones to use one of these things in the, in my area. And I was just looked down upon with not only the six, five, because that's a terrible round, but the yeah. Burris eliminator, because yeah. I'm a cheater and I'm telling you right now, it is absolutely a great scope. If there's a lot, a lot of stuff happening in the scope, but if you can get past that, it's a great scope. Yeah. And man, I shot yours and Jesse's and my buddy Travis actually got one on a uh, Ruger predator 223 freaking money. That thing is, that oh, is money, man. man. And this thing is small. It, so what's the difference, Scott? It's like, if nobody gave you shit who did that, that I had like target turrets on their scope, did they? Because what's the difference? Yeah. You got your freaking, you can either pull it up. On oh, no, they're taking and, their hand range finder and they're doing this. Yeah. And then, got, and then they're dialing your, and they look at their dope chart and they're doing this. And I'm yeah. like, I'm doing all of that without losing the coyote in my vision. Right. But but if it's cheating, then they're just looking up how to zero in what they need anyways then, right? So what's it? Well, it's not as fast. Okay. So what? here's the problem is everybody's so against everything that we do hunting-wise or shooting-wise. It doesn't matter. Just freaking have fun that you have guns and you were able to do this. Man, that burst eliminator is awesome. Jesse brought his out, um, him and... Uh, God, who did he come out hunting with coyotes once? They didn't get any, but I shot his. I think it was his 243, a big long-barreled sucker. But at 600 yards, that thing was right on the nuts. That was oh, freaking yeah. awesome. Yeah. It was awesome. So, yeah, no, I got I, that burst. It just, hey, it's just you get a more ethical shot with it. And it, yeah. it even works. They did offer me a sponsorship one time, and I turned them down. I'm waiting for that day I can do that. Because <laughs> they only wanted me to use burst eliminator. And... I'm not that kind of guy. I mean, what do you do on something that you don't want to scope on? Exactly. Exactly. And that's the thing is they wouldn't let me do any mm-hmm. shows no, or any pictures unless you had that on it. And I was like, wow, that's not me. Cause I'll, I'll let you know if it works or it doesn't. So. Yeah. I know it. Yeah, for sure. And then you definitely, I mean, it always looked kind of flunky to me, but once I did, you know, I use your creed out there and I just picked out that little rock and after shooting prey dogs, I'm like, yeah, smoke that sucker i mean that's yeah. dead about anything at six hondo yeah. and no i love it Hush. so yeah. Yeah, clay said hey jamie remember treat a flamethrower just like a gun it's always loaded right <laughs> that sucker was loaded yeah he clay loves his bird he's got it on his ruger precision so speaking of that ruger precision um friend of mine actually 223 guns they make that that rpr 223 yep. Mo- absolute freaking money it's a great, it, it's a very nice, very comfortable rifle to shoot. Oh, everything I've shot in that, the Creed and that, that's yeah. two I've shot in that. They were, I mean, just, at 600 yards, my brother-in-law had one. And I'm talking like the top of a beer can. We were stacking rounds at 600. And So I want a video of you taking a, a old-fashioned, you know, they make Coors Heavy right now in the little pony bottles. <laughs> okay, I right? didn't know that. Okay. So they do. They're like the little pony bottles. Yeah, I want you to grab a six pack of those instead of ballistic gel. Okay. I want you to set up your camera, and I want you to just spin it so the top f- spins off of that thing. You shoot the top at what range? I don't care. I just want to see it in slow motion, and then okay. drink the beer with no glass in it. Okay, I'll give that's it. what I want to do. I'll I'm guessing. What, I'm, not... I'm just saying, V Max is probably the way to go. But all right. I'm gonna check out because I'm heading up. I'm heading up Saturday. I'm gonna go to the liquor store tomorrow and find these things. Well, bring some over to Shreefers because we'll be done by that time. Yeah, when are you going back Saturday? I have a coyote tournament. I got to come back and sell some uh, whiskey bottles for some uh, charity events for. So as soon as the it's done, I'll probably be heading back. So what time does it typically get over? You think? Oh, well, we'll be done by Central Time, probably four o'clock. Oh, shit, I'll be up there way. Because I got to get up there. Like I said, I'm going to talk to my cousin about shooting prairie dogs on that night. I've never been on a night hunt, but You're gonna um, like it. Tanner invited me to go out, and I'm, I'm going to take him up on it. So You know, the thermal imaging is making leaps and bounds. I'm four years old into it, and I want to up, upgrade because, I mean, it's just it's mm-hmm. so impressive. Well, he sent me some yeah. video of his stuff, and, I mean, it's all. I mean, I, I'm shocked at long range how clear the yeah. images are, so. Prairie dogs are out at night, by the way. Are they? Not, not a lot of them, but some of them do come out at night. <laughs> well, that sounds awesome right yeah. there. Yeah. I'd shoot a prairie dog anytime, man. And that's where you want to go if you have a prairie dog town and you want to do night vision or thermal on coyotes. 
go out during oh, the day and in, kill shoot, them. Come in shoot, shoot a pile of them, and then just sit there and wait in your Sweet. pickup. Perfect. Yeah. All right, man. Well, what. thanks for having me on the program. See, they know about the tweed jacket. Yeah, 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 they do. They absolutely. Thank you for coming on, Scott. Man, we went longer than I wanted to. But we had a great conversation. Oh. Go, man! It's always fun talking to you. Yeah. I love it. What do you got? You losing your audio there? I'm t- just hang, just hang in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. There you go. <laughs> I got one in each ear. I got the tinnitus <laughs> ear where it's always ringing. I got and this two one. ears. Yeah. yeah, one for each of you. <laughs> <laughs> so. So the movie Tombstone was the original gun control. You know that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Hey, hey, nobody's saying you can't have guns. You just can't yeah. have one in town. Yeah. That's right. right. For sure. Hey, Whalen Turners. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. You too, Josh. Thanks, man. Love love you guys tuning yeah. in every week. Appreciate your support. Uh, Whalen, I'll see Whalen at the Mule Deer Banquet in Mandan coming up in February. Hey, Whalen, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm going to swing over there. You can buy yourself some flamethrower tickets, man do that yeah because he, he he didn't get that 30 odd six uh hunting hunting ar from from clayton there but but he was the rock star selling tickets whalen turners can sell some freaking tickets so whalen was the first one to win a gun from my dakota prairie outdoors before they shut me down and the attorney general shut me down doing that so. <laughs> really well we're ours is coming out northwest shooters in south dakota is doing ours so we don't have to worry about it. yeah <laughs> Hands off. It's all about Mike Deacons. Yep. yep. Yeah. Wash him. Wash him. Here's his, his social security number. You can have yeah. this too. Hey, Brian, thanks. Looking forward to I'll get I'll be talking to you before we do the, the, the meat show there in two weeks from tomorrow. Gene Cox, Scott's last show, possibly the best after show that didn't happen. <laughs> Whalen sounds good. All right, buddy. So just to do a little do a little PR here uh, tomorrow. It's already fr- yeah. I'm used to doing this Wednesday, but tomorrow Friday morning, eight fifteen a.m. Central, seven fifteen Mountain. Guns and the seven hundred one is going to be on with Mitchell in the morning. KFYR five fifty. Not only on that ninety nine point seven FM. And if you don't want to do that, you got it on uh, iHeart Radio. You can get uh, get on uh, five fifty a.m. on there. And if you don't want to, you don't want to do that. Guess what? Clay multicast the radio show on all of guns and the 701 social media platform so you can do that as well and then every wednesday night you can catch clay and deacons doing guns and the 701's live stream on there i'm on every other week i don't have a set day yet uh, i mean one of the reasons that i kind of i was going to back out and quit is because it was just getting to be too much doing that and fridays and all the videos but you know what this is working good and if People keep tuning in, Scott. I said I was going to give it uh, give it a run here in the first three months, and if people people, people keep tuning in and and liking it, I'm going to keep doing it. So there you go. And I, I so Vance, I'm sorry, I forgot. Vance Bishop's on every Wednesday too from down in Georgia. There, I apologize for that. But yeah, it's Vance and, and Mike Deacons and Clayton doing that. It's kind of more Wednesday nights. I think them guys are kind of more into the. Um, not that I'm not in the Second Amendment issues. Obviously, if you heard me for the last year and a half on there, I am. But I think them guys kind of cover the political issues in Second Amendment. And I think Fridays are kind of like that. They kind of started, I think, last week and last two weeks, they kind of did the happy endings, too, on there. I like that. I kind Say of what now? The, yeah. What now? <laughs> not with Todd. No, you're going, not to, you're going, to, Todd you're going to Thailand with this show, or what's going on here? <laughs> a happy ending, if nobody knows. Uh, happy endings when a person uses a gun to defend their life or, or, oh. or other people. So Way yeah. different than what I thought you were yeah. going for here, buddy. Yeah, it's a Second Amendment happy ending, man. You know. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. <laughs> Oh, I got a joke about that. I can tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you what. We get off here. We're gonna you give me the joke here. And anyway, anyway. So everybody, thanks for tuning in, hanging with us. We're gonna click out here, Scott. And uh, it was great talking to you. Appreciate yeah. you coming on, man. Anytime. And, so I appreciate you uh, being a friend of mine here for many, many years, and and uh, cross referencing our shows all the time. And yeah, it's what we do. We. Uh, May not see eye to eye, but at least we can sit down and have a conversation all the time. Yeah. I'm still looking for that thing we don't see eye to eye on, though. That's true. Well, <laughs> I'll no. send you some photos. I guess. <laughs> all right, buddy. Hang in there. We'll, we'll, we'll talk after the show here. Just hang on. All right, everybody. Thanks again. Appreciate you tuning in, JD, 701 Nation. We'll see you guys in two weeks. <laughs>